The president is calling for his Justice Department to allow members of Congress to review documents related to the FBI informant. He tweeted this, if the FBI or DOJ was infiltrating a campaign for the benefit of another campaign, that is a really big deal. Only the release or review of documents that the House Intelligence Committee, also the Senate Judiciary, is asking for can give the conclusive answers. Drain the swamp. First guest up, Congressman Matt Gates. The Florida Republican sits on the House Judiciary Committee. Great to see you. Uh, let's start with this idea about this informant. And the argument against it, Congressman, is that it might put that informant in danger. And you say what? Well, this is a particular individual who has been reported on to be involved in intelligence activities with campaigns dating back to the 80s. And so it's not as if this is particularly news regarding the affiliation of this individual. I will say, Harris, the White House is not yet fully informed regarding the extent to which intelligence was collected on the Trump campaign. There is additional information that uh, House investigators have collected, and we need to make sure that the White House gets appropriately informed about that because uh, it will not be enough to have Rod Rosenstein and others at the Department of Justice investigate themselves. We got enough investigations where the Justice Department is investigating themselves. More than almost anything we've discussed in the past, this is a basis to appoint a second special counsel, someone who is independent, and we need the president to declassify the information immediately regarding this intelligence collection on the so, Trump campaign so that we can talk about it with you. So, Congressman, uh, Representative Jim Jordan said that he he had written a letter directly, he and others had written a letter mm -hmm. directly to the president about declassifying information, making it less redacted. Where are we on that? Well, we need the president to immediately do that. Uh, what was I don't his know response? that he's given a direction. I don't know that we've received a response yet other than the tweet, which kind of in and of itself weaves uh, a difficult catch-22. He says in the tweet he wants the Depart Department of Justice to investigate the FBI and the Department of Justice. Uh, again, that has not proven fruitful. We're in like Groundhog Day with Justice where we request documents. Wow. They give us too many redactions. You know, then we have to fight with them back and forth. We need the president to immediately declassify classify this information so we can talk about it with the American people. So you are in Groundhog Day with the DOJ. Uh, that will be a line of, of this Monday, no doubt. So what would you like for the DOJ to do at this point uh, in terms of if they don't do this, what's the alternative? What's a plan B? Well, of course, I would like Jeff Sessions to step up and renounce his recusal and take control of this investigation. Yes, I have. And he has said he's totally unwilling to do that. It's it's like, you know, the uh, over the Department of Justice, he's got Stockholm syndrome. He's become sympathetic with his captors over there in the deep state. And, and so that or would maybe be it's one because thing. he's recused himself. Well, yeah, but that's the, the recusal itself is the problem. There's no legal or factual basis for that recusal to exist. And the consequence of that recusal is that Rod Rosenstein, the very individual who is signing renewals of the FISA warrants, now has the ability to send this latest uh, allegation off to investigation land and then use that as a basis to not produce documents to Congress because he can say it's the subject of an ongoing investigation. Wow. So we need to get out of this cycle, well, declassify the documents, and expose the deed states for what they have done in particular their intelligence collection on President Trump's campaign. Uh, real quickly, Congressman Gates, uh, if you move forward with the infiltrator, the informant, whatever this person is, uh, is there a way to deal with that element and to find out what really happened with that person inside the Trump campaign without divulging that person's identity? Well, uh, probably there is. It's not the person's identity that's at issue. The issue is why was intelligence being collected? But Democrats say if you put collected? it out there, it'll endanger that person. So the identity yeah, but does this isn't come about, into play. Yeah, but this isn't about, you know, look, th there are ways we can protect specific identities. But let's keep in mind, I don't think people here were being used, like, unwittingly. I think this was a coordinated mm. scheme to collect intelligence on the president's campaign. But look, there are ways we can still protect sources and methods. We've got to figure out why the intelligence was used. What did it uh, manifest into? Was the Trump uh, Russia investigation in any way influenced by illegal surveillance on a political campaign? Those are the questions we have to answer, and they bear right. no relationship to the specific identity of the informant. I want to move on here. I would just say this last word. The American people are looking at this and may be wondering, Republicans, Republicans, both the DOJ and Republicans in the House Intel, it gets confusing. Why can't they work it out? Let's move on. Uh, Robert Mueller told the president's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, if he interviews the president by mid-July, he should have the Russia probe wrapped up by September 1st. What do you make of that? If any lawyer 
uh, advises President Trump to sit for an interview with Robert Mueller, they need to immediately notify their malpractice insurance carrier. Ooh. This would be a perjury trap. We already know how biased the Mueller team is. The president knows this. We know the tactics that they've used to try to go and find totally unrelated events to Russia collusion and then to try to use that to squeeze people. Now, they've, uh, they're, they're beyond Russia. They're wandering around the Middle East with the Emiratis and the Qataris trying to drum up some collusion narrative. This would be a disaster if the president sits for this interview and no reasonable lawyer should recommend that to him. If there's an opportunity, though, to get the investigation wrapped up before the midterm election, the president is saying, it, you know, you, would you even want to look at that? Because what he's saying is that this conversation about the Russia probe could actually hurt the midterm elections for Republicans. So what do you do? Hey, look, there are voters are not going to be voting on Russia. Voters are going to be voting on their own economic conditions. And if the president thinks that sitting down with Robert Mueller is going to hasten the conclusion of this, then uh, that would be a terrible miscalculation. If he sits and with no Robert one says Mueller, he that will extend that. It's, the investigation. Yeah, right. no, no, no one is saying that. Yeah, yeah, you were just posturing it as a potential to wrap up the investigation. My point is, it won't. It will extend the investigation. It will launch it into a variety of unrelated activities mm. that have nothing to do with foreign interference in the election. Again, you see the Mueller probe now having to go and investigate these things that have nothing to do with Russia at all to try to drum up collusion narratives. And so uh, we've mm. got to wrap this up, I think, in Congress and at the Justice Department. The president should not sit for that interview. It's an interesting point that you make, Congressman Gates, because we have seen such a broad look afar afield from collusion potentially uh, mm -hmm. by the Mueller investigative team. Great to mm -hmm. see you today. Thank you. You've given us a lot to talk about. Thank you. Here with reaction to tonight's big breaking news, author of the upcoming book. It's going to be out June 5th and available for pre-order now on barnesandnoble.com, Hannity.com. It's called Trump's America, the truth about our nation's great comeback. Former Speaker of the House, Fox News contributor Newt Gingrich. I want to talk about your book, but not now. This, <laughs> I, I, sorry, I like, I love you. You're my, you're family to me. But when you look at this, and Ted Olson, and Mark Penn, and Cheryl Atkinson, and now even the New York Times and Washington Post, well, trying to get ahead of what they failed to do for a year and a half, and the deep state is real, and the effort to undermine the president is real. FISA abuse is real. Spies in the Trump campaign are real. You're the great historian. Tell me where this, where, where in history this will, will stack up to. Well, I, I think it's rapidly becoming the biggest and the most sobering uh, political scandal in American history. Um, somebody pointed out earlier, you know, we, back when J. Edgar Hoover was spying at Lyndon Johnson's behest on Richard Nixon, we thought it was terrible. Back when they had a break-in at the Watergate, we thought it was terrible. This is a multi-year effort that has two different fronts, and people need to always remember that. One front was protecting, propping up, covering up for Bill and Hillary Clinton. The other front, as, as Trump became more and more serious, the other front was to stop Trump at any cost. Now, I believe that the reason you see people like Sally Yates go berserk, you see John Brennan go berserk, you see General Clapper go berserk, they're all guilty. When you see somebody in the Obama team who gets that rattled and is that angry, what you know is they're scared to death that they're going to get drawn into all this and their role is going to come out and it will involve, I think, felonies. And frankly, I suspect it reaches to the President Obama. It's inconceivable that President Obama could have had this many things going on and not known it because his administration was very controlling and very tight. And I think we're going to discover all the stuff in the end ends up at the Obama White House and has the president and his senior staff's fingerprints all over it. The question remains, what did he know? What did Kerry know? What did Susan Rice and Ben Rhodes know? Sure. What did Clapper and Brennan know? We haven't even talked about unmasking, but you're right. Hillary gets a rigged investigation, and then comes the effort to undermine a president or a candidate, then a president-elect, and then a president in the United States. And you put spies, and you lie right, to and court, you lie to FISA judges. I think I think the number one thing 
the average everyday American can take from all this is that the corruption was so deep at the top. And again, remember, we're not talking about the everyday FBI agent doing their job. We're talking about people at the very top. And those people were so corrupt and so arrogant that they thought they could get away with anything. And so they just proceeded down the road, protecting Hillary, covering up Hillary, giving immunity to people who are breaking the law, and then going after Trump and going after Trump's supporters. Uh, the, the, when all of this comes out as one in a way that's easy to understand, which may take, frankly, another year or a year and a half, because there's so much of it. And every time we turn around, as you know, another piece unravels. Uh, and, and you've had more big stories in the last year and a half than I would have thought possible. And again and again, you've been right. And inch by inch, even The New York Times is having to concede. And I think, by the way, Mark Penn's column today is a real breakthrough. Agreed. Because here you have a genuine, unqualified member of the left saying, this is a threat to all of us. And uh, we have got to get rid of Mueller because he literally threatens every American's freedom. Mr. Speaker, you understand the Constitution. You understand uh, checks and balances, separation of powers, constitutional authority, oversight of Congress. How dare Rod Rosenstein, who already is conflicted in this by recommending the firing of Comey and signing one of the FISA warrants, how dare they not turn this over to Congress? But that's what they have done. What should Congress do? You are a former speaker. Well, well, I mean, first of all, I think it's beginning to move in the right direction. I think the president's beginning to weigh in to reinforce the Republicans in Congress. I think, you know, General Kelly being given this assignment uh, is a very tough, very serious man. Uh, and I think he is going to impose on the Justice Department uh, doing their job of turning over legitimate, appropriate information to the legislative branch. But everybody ought to remember, you mentioned the Constitution. Remember that when they were done writing it, Benjamin Franklin was asked by a woman, you know, what have we got? And he said, we have a republic if we can keep it. This is one of those great tests in American history. Corruption came close to destroying the liberties you and I believe in. And if Hillary got elected, none of this would have come out. Scary. Mr. Speaker, we appreciate right. your perspective, uh, as always.